How's it going everyone? Coach Javi here, welcome back to the channel. I'm just waiting for Georgie to get here. He should be here any minute. I'm setting up the session right now, getting everything out and where it's supposed to go. I had to move everything a little bit further out that way because when people come out here and use the field, when it's snowing, all the snow turns into ice. So don't want to do any of the session in that part of the field. So there's no chance of us getting hurt or slipping or, you know, twisting our ankles or whatever. So I'm going to finish setting up and then Georgie should be here any minute. So to start the uh, training session for today, we incorporated the blaze pods. Again, I like to incorporate these because they're quite a bit of fun. It sets a good mood for the rest of the session. For the beginning or the warm up exercise that we did, it's just a quick little shuffle to whichever pod is lighting up. And then you always have to go back to the home pod, which lights up red. So the three pods in front of the home pod will light up blue. If it's one of the ones on the side, you just tap it, come back to the home pod. And if it's the one that's directly in front, then you just sprint past it. A fun little exercise to get our legs moving and to get our brains turned on for the rest of the session. After that, we incorporate them into a simple touch exercise. So we did two different colors. Now the base pod is green, I believe, and the pods in front of it can light up either blue or red. If it lights up blue, then it's just a one touch pass on each side of the pod. And if it lights up red, you have to back up, take it across your body to the other side of the pod and play it back. And you do that twice. So now not only are we reacting to which pod lights up, but we're also thinking about what type of passing variation we have to do. So again, just uh, something a little bit bit more complex it's really not that hard because by the time you actually get to the pod you know what passing variation you're going to do but again just something fun and something different to add a little bit of variation to the warm-up exercises also don't forget that if you guys want to purchase these blaze pods i will leave a link in the description that is my personal link it not only gives me a kickback on each sale but it gives you guys a discount that you wouldn't get anywhere else so if you do feel like purchasing the blaze pods i highly recommend them go ahead and use my link because that helps out the channel so when is this uh when is this dropping january 23rd january 23rd 11 a.m eastern time you can get the camo windbreaker i don't know when i'm gonna post this video usually what i do is i have like four videos scheduled already so this video is actually four four videos behind what i have already in the youtube queue i'm not exactly sure when i'm gonna be releasing this right now I'm posting every two to three days but i think i'll be releasing this before january 23rd if it falls on that date then it falls on that day but go ahead check out champion grind january 23rd 11 a.m eastern time and uh, you can cop this on the website use my code javi10 for a discount is that it? Yep. All right. End of the commercial there. So after the blaze pod warm-ups, we did a very simple passing exercise where George just sidesteps between each cone and then just gives me a pass back one touch. We did it on the right side. And of course, as always, if we do it on our strong side, we do it on our weak side as well. So anything on the right foot, we do on the left foot. It's all just repetition. So George is just getting a lot of touches in this exercise and it's really just a completely technical exercise. So I believe we did a one touch pass and then we did instep and then we did laces and then after that we finished with some headers but again you can spend an entire training session just on this exercise if you want to get creative and write up a ton of different variations So with the exact same setup, what we did is now I'm receiving it, I'm taking it across my body and I'm playing it back to Georgie and I'm doing this twice at every single cone. So little by little, I'm moving up the cone line until I get to the end. So if one person's doing the exercise and the other person's just passing the ball, obviously once you get to the end, you can switch. Or if you want, you can go back in the other direction and then repeat the exercise, get twice as many reps. So again, we did a few different variations of this one. The first one was obviously just taking it across your body with one foot and then playing it back with the other. 
together. The next one is you stop it, you drag it across, and then you play it back. And then the last one that I did was uh, outside of the foot across your body and then you play it back so with these exercises we're trying to focus on a certain part of our foot however the pass is not always going to come in perfectly so if you have to adjust and take a touch with the opposite foot or take a touch with a different part of your foot i want you guys to adjust to adapt and then just make sure that you keep that ball under control so don't get so focused on if we're using the inside of our foot always using the inside of our foot but if it is a bad pass and we have to adjust that's part of the game make sure that you make those proper adjustments and you continue the exercise exercise with the ball under control at all times. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, per usual, we're gonna interrupt this video to answer some subscriber questions. We need a, we need a name for this segment. What do you need a sponsor? We need a sponsor. It's like, you are the team. Let me know. We need a segment name for this. If you guys have one, go ahead and leave it down in the comment section down below. This question comes from AJ Smith, who says, any tips on beating taller and stronger players in a 1v1? Taller and stronger players in a 1v1. You got any ideas, George? Got any ideas? That's true. That's the word. You have to outsmart them. So you have to be a little bit more intelligent with your movements. One tip I can give you is think about your positioning before you get into the 1v1. Before you receive the ball, see if you can get a few yards to build up a little bit of space either so you can build up some speed as you're dribbling or by the time the ball comes to your feet, you can play a quick little wall pass and the defender is there just a little bit too late. Also, keep it simple and use your teammates. So I know you said in a 1v1, but if they're taller and stronger, obviously the easiest solution is if you're faster, maybe you can beat them with speed. Honestly, is don't put yourself in a position where you're in a 1v1 where the only thing you have to do or you can do is beat the defender. Try to put yourself in a position where you always have some sort of a passing option and you can use your teammates to get around that defender because the ball will always travel faster than the player. So if you can use that to your advantage, then that's gonna help you. So if I'm think, um, is Fabregas even a player that players know anymore? Think about that. Kids nowadays probably don't even know who Fabregas is. Let me know in the comment section if you guys know who he is. Fabregas was a really, really good player because he was very smart with his movements. He wasn't the fastest, he wasn't the tallest, he wasn't the strongest, but his positioning was very, very good. So there's a video of Fabregas that I'll put uh, on top of this, hopefully I don't get copyrighted for it. But basically, he's going up against two players who are faster than him on the Chelsea squad, and he manages to outsmart them by picking the correct movements. So think about that. It's all about being just a little bit smarter, and I think Fabregas is a good example. Hard to defend, hard to pick up, because you never really knew exactly where he was gonna move. And by the time you finally got into the space where he was at, he was already in a different space. So that's a good example. That's a good example. Two. So this one you guys have seen on my channel quite a lot. All it is is there's one partner on the outside and then there's one partner in the middle. The first one you receive it, they call out a number and obviously you assign a number to each one of the agility poles. On the first one, you dribble it towards that agility pole, go around it, come back to the cone, and then play the pass. And then after you play that pass, they'll call out another number, and then that one's just a sprint without the ball. And then obviously you just keep repeating this for as long as you want. I believe me and Georgia did about 35 to 45 seconds, somewhere in between there. So obviously what we're looking for is making sure that when we dribble the ball, we're dribbling it as close to our feet as we can, nice and controlled. And then when we go around the agility poles, we're not taking too much space around the agility poles. It's a nice sharp cut around and then when we get back into the middle it's a quick reaction One. to the appropriate pull and then as you guys can see in the set I incorporated the ball being launched in on the bounce so Georgie has to control it before he makes his move to the agility pulse so just take a look at how well Georgie takes that first touch off the bounce in the direction that he already wants to go so he's bringing it down as he's already making that movement so you can tell that Georgie's at a high level because he's able to do this and make it look easy for younger players I would highly suggest that they focus Focus on receiving and controlling the ball first, bringing it onto the ground completely before they make that movement. Otherwise, it's going to get a little bit sloppy and they're going to end up going before the ball is under their control completely. So, uh, Georgie makes it look easy and obviously that's one thing that makes him a good central midfielder. Yeah, if you can do that, then go ahead and do that. If not, then bring the ball down completely. Make sure you don't mess it up. It's still under your control and then you can move. Yeah. Yep. Oh. 
heard me say strong foot lesson number one always work on your weak foot ladies and gentlemen because one day your weak foot might surprise you that it'll be your strong foot coach Javi's not left footed he's right footed actually check that he's both footed there's no weak foot George there is no weak foot here there is. I mean I missed both of those but still you get the idea there's no weak foot Quality, yeah, set myself up, finish. Yeah. Yep. Listen. No, 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 no. I always no, slipped don't. under the goalkeeper. Where am I gonna save it? Lesson two. Don't get overconfident because that's what happens. Stay humble, my friends. Don't be like Coach Javi. Don't don't be like Georgie at all. Be more like Coach Javi. If you're gonna be like anybody, be more like Coach Javi and not Georgie. So for the next one, we start off with a dribble and there's four balls total. You dribble through the cones, you pass it into the corner and then you pick up the next ball on the other side and do the same thing. After you've passed that one into the corner, you come in by the agility pole, first touch around it, stay on that side and then set yourself up for the curling finish. So the first two balls are just a pass into the corner. So we're just using the goal as a little bit of a backstop for the balls. And for the two further shots, obviously we're trying to set ourselves up, making sure our hips are facing in the goal and uh, I'm using the curl method or the curling method whatever you want to call it to try and bend that ball in far post So for the last two shooting exercises, it's pretty much the exact same one. We just switched up the variation at the agility pole. For the right footed shot, all we did was a quick little instep pass on both sides of the pole. You back up, you receive a pass, take your touch around the mannequin and then have a finish. So again, the main uh, word that I can associate these exercises with is repetition. Get a lot of repetition and focus on the technical components of the exercise. As you're doing the exercise and as you're taking these shots, think about little things that you can do to improve, how you're setting yourself up for a shot, how you're receiving it and try and fix it while you're actually doing the exercise. If you need to do another set, go ahead and do another set. Sometimes Georgie and I will only do one or two sets if we feel good. And then uh, if we felt like it didn't go as smoothly as we wanted to, we bring back the balls and we do another set. So obviously, as you guys heard in the video, it's very, very important. If you want to become a good player, a professional level player, everything that you do with your strong foot, you have to do with your weak foot. There are no exceptions. Last thing that you want to do is grow up and be one of those players that only has one foot. You'll notice at the professional ranks, everybody is good at using both feet. And if they are a little bit weaker on one foot, it means that they're exceptionally better on the other foot, much better than all the other players, because uh, there's a certain standard that has to be met and in order to do that you have to have two very good feet and that once again wraps up this episode of the pre preseason series i'm trying to upload one pre preseason series episode and then a more educational sit down studio type episode um, after that if you guys have any ideas of what i should be uploading or what type of videos you guys would like to see go ahead and leave those in the comment section down below i do read all the comments and a lot of the videos that i've made especially the educational ones come from the comments that i get on the channel so go ahead don't forget to uh give me your input down there in the comment section down below until next time, and adios, chachos.